it's a, it's a Michael Mina restaurant. So yeah, they yeah. worked for the Michael Mina group for almost five years. Because yeah. that's she she's the pastry chef at a Michael Mina she, restaurant. Yeah, she's one of the she's one of three. Wow. wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, so they own Tabu. They have Michael Mina on two five two California. Yeah. They got the International Smoke on Mission Street. Okay. And then a, a while back, they had uh, Bourbon Steak at um, the Western St. Francis. Right. And that's kind of a, not a chain, but they have multiple outlets. And I was working at that one in Washington D.C. That's where I moved to from New York. Nice. Yeah, bourbon steak is really good. I really enjoy their food there. Oh, awesome. oh is that the place you were talking about? Yeah, where you what, went and dropped uh, I all got that? Half off <laughs> and still spent five hundred dollars. It's b called bourbon steak. Yeah, it's, uh, it's inside Levi State. State they're like on the side, like yeah. built into the stadium. Yeah. Oh, it's part of Levi Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a Michael Mina restaurant, so it's yeah. pretty damn good. That's why it's so expensive too, yeah. right? Yeah. He's got a big name, and he's, he's got, got a, bunch a of, he's, he's got a bunch of Michelin stars as well. He's got one. I I think he's got a Michelin star in San Francisco, actually. Uh, I, yeah. I believe it. Yeah, I think he does. And uh, since it's built into Levi Stadium, they always get uh, Niner players and stuff who come in, and they actually oh, did a. I bet they did a catering event that was on the 50-yard line for all the wow. Niners executives and stuff. Yeah, nice. For now, it's called the Culinary Edge. Yeah. Um, we, as well as consultants, own our own brands, so our own companies, and we operate our own restaurants. Right. Um, there is also in Levi's Stadium, it's called Starbird. Starbird is, um, at the tagline is positively, positively delicious chicken, but it's uh, you know, organic, free range chicken. Um, it's actually gluten free as well, our breading, but it, you wouldn't notice and it is kind of bringing modern modern health to the fried chicken industry which is kind of funny but um california version so we own operate there's three of them in the bay area not including um levi stadium now but nice. just two years ago this started nice did she ever make them for you? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, she was like, I can't make you croissants unless we get more counter space. So I went out and <laughs> bought the stuff to make an ex a mobile island countertop. And I, we made it. I was like, all right, here you go. I expect croissants. I like your style, man. You need to encourage that type of activity. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she's... And were you a chef when you first came out here, or...? Yes, um, I was a chef for the Michael Meany Group. I came out to work for RN74, which used to be where uh, International Smoke is now. Okay. Um, fine dining chef, seven years, did in New York City, worked at Gramercy Tavern, um, went to Washington DC to work at Bourbon Steak, and then out here I also did, before all that, I did an internship in San Francisco where I opened up Michael Meany at 252 California Street. Wow. So that was, I've kind of done a lot of work for, with them and then. So what kind of stuff does she make then? Uh, besides croissants at home, yeah. they don't they don't make those at a bourbon steak, but uh, right. at, she makes opera cake, which is, we had an alcoholic milkshake. That was pretty dope. It, it was a bananas foster. So it's made, it's bananas foster with rum and stuff. And then nice. I turned it into a milkshake with salted caramel and salted caramel rim and stuff. Yeah. And uh, rolled white chocolate with gold flake, gold truffle flake on it. It was amazing. Cool. So that's like. And when Michael Mina comes in, he gets a uh, Mina water, which is just straight vodka and ice. Oh, he shows up. Oh yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah. He's, he's there. He's there a lot? Yeah. Oh, for, cool. for most of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Does that include wine? Yeah. It includes wine. It includes any kind of wine. Five hundred bucks. I don't know about. There's wine there. I don't know about. I don't know about any kind of wine. But I, I yeah, don't. they're not bringing out the uh, vintage champagne for yeah. fi for five hundred bucks. Probably not. No. This, yeah. Well, do we call it staging? Where you just go work for free? Yep. Free labor. Yep. Um, but nice restaurants generally get a lot of their, you know, employees a lot of their menial tasks done through free labor of people that want to have it on their <laughs> resume. Yeah. Um, but I worked in London for two months, uh, Paris for two months, and Barcelona for two months. Damn, so you've been around. I did. did Very cool. Um, um, 
and I had, and I had this kind of method um, where I'd go, I'd, I'd find the, the restaurant in the city that I wanted to potentially work at just from like looking at pictures or like knowing the chef or something and um, I'd go into the restaurant with the last reservation and at the end of it I would I kind of like let them know like hey I'm a cook from America um, and usually that kind of industry takes care of you even no matter where you are and that's one of the really cool things about being a chef is when you tell somebody that you're also in the industry that there's the hospitality that comes with it so they'll treat you nice and make sure you have a really good time. Um, but I'd ask for the chef to come out at the end of the meal and I'd just say, hey man, I wanna, I wanna work here for free. Just let me come to work. I right. really enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, the first restaurant was in London, it was called Hibiscus. And the chef brings me to the back of the house. I'm like fucking shit-faced at this point. <laughs> like at, after this long meal and they know that I'm a chef, they want me to have a good time. He brings me back in front of the whole kitchen staff, and um, he's like, "This this asshole wants to come work for us. Like, what yeah. do you think?" And yeah. they're all like, "Yeah," you know, like getting pumped up. And he's like, "All right, show up at 6:30 tomorrow morning." And I show up at 6:30 tomorrow morning, and no one's there. And I'm just like, "Oh shit," he's just like <laughs> messing with me. But uh, an hour and a half hilarious. later, they show up. I waited, and one of my best friends came from that meeting on the first day in the kitchen who lived with me for a year in San Francisco after this wow um, super incredible but wow I did yeah well that's cool well it sounds like you have maybe something to do with football what do you get up to well I am a coach oh. football coach I'm coaching at San Jose State this this upcoming season okay yeah. what about you man what's your story back there um, pretty pretty typical Director of Software Engineering. Data. I'm Director of Software Engineering. Pretty typical, man. Pretty typical. What, what exactly is typical, typical about that? Typical uh, Asian guy in Silicon Valley. Unfortunately. Why is that unfortunate? <laughs> I wish I could say something interesting like, uh, I'm an actor. No, I'm not. Well, I mean, what kind of software? I'm a poet. You know, software? Yeah. Uh, I actually work on the data side. There's something called big data. Okay. And what that is, is like nowadays your devices, whether it be your phone or even your car, uh, website, it's just pouring off enormous amounts of data or information, like logs about you. Yeah. Like this phone, right? It, it, in fact, that that GoPro, yeah. which I actually work there, is, is collecting a lot of information every second yeah. that you're recording. You yeah. Know? Didn't and Facebook get in a lot of trouble for that? Well, every company is doing it. Well, they just got in trouble because they shared it. Oh, okay. But, um, but yeah, so so I build the systems that sort of collect that data and aggregate it, analyze it, do data science on it. Got it. Try and improve products and experiences and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. Three times in a row. In Paris, it was very difficult because of uh, um, Visa, but, yep. you know. It worked. That was a really fun experience. Then I came back and worked for um, a company called High Neighbor Group. They own a restaurant called Stone's Throw and Trestle. And um, they were friends from the Mina Group from before. And I just helped out for about a year. And then started my own business doing kind of pop-up events. I really wanted to like link up music, art, food, fashion, like whatever kind of created creativity that was going on that I was kind of missing from getting my ass kicked for so long and tried to like put it all in the same house and I would, you know, bust my ass running around the city throwing up, throwing these events and one day one, an employee from the consultancy that I work for now yeah. came to one of my events and recruited me to come work for this consulting group that I didn't even wow. that I didn't even realize exist this niche kind of industry existed where you know we are creatively making menus for the Starbucks of the world the Jack in the Box of the world the um, you know Marriott Hotel Group Hyatt like these big companies will come in and um, need help and a lot of the times it's kind of just a strategic vision on like what 
products, but it's super interesting, super fun. Wow, that is a fascinating story. So you truly are a self-starter. So like you made it all happen. I think it's more of a risk thing. Yeah. I think it's just being like kind of comfortable, like knowing that at the end of the day, the cool thing about being a chef is you get to, I can go anywhere in the world tomorrow and have a job at the very least. Like it doesn't matter what I'm getting paid. Like, yeah. you know, I have a, I have a trade where if I, I don't have to say a word, you can know that I can work clean, I can work efficient, I can listen to tasks and like execute. And that's a pretty like freeing thing to know that you're not like confined to, you know, oh shit, I lost my job, I don't, I have to find something else. Like no, there's a million cook jobs no matter where you go. Yeah. So there's not much to be worried about. I can make $50,000 as a shoe chef getting my fucking ke teeth kicked in anytime I want to. So why not take a risk at yeah, you know, yeah. maybe not having to do that. Yeah, so you're, you're a still? software guy too. Yeah, look, I mean, I've been working with computers since the Apple IIe, since 1981, oh, when my dad came home with an Apple IIe. Nice. So yeah. you know, I'm I'm not a uh, I'm not a programmer, I'm not an engineer by trade, but I'm familiar enough with the systems, and you know, yeah. I, I've I've messed around with Python a little bit, yeah. you know, put together a few little programs, that kind of thing. So wow. you know, I understand enough enough of it to. Um, you know, so the, the all the programmers and stuff, they'll still talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't completely shut me off. So. Do you live in the, you, you, you're up in the city? Yep. Yeah, I'm oh. up in San Francisco. Oh man, so you're... you're, yeah. you're yeah. Do you still put events on or no? Done with that? Um, I actually did an event with a really close friend. Uh, my grandmother got Alzheimer's, so we threw in he works or he he's a big boxer and there's this company or this nonprofit called uh, rock city boxing so we did a mutual benefit where we did two nights of 40 people um like a five course meal and all the proceeds went to so some fun stuff nice but um yeah as far as like trying to get all that together i don't think i realized when i started what type of initiative that was yeah. um and i think that the timing was perfect i think it's something that i really enjoy but the amount of work and effort is like you know i'm not 22 anymore like yeah not that i'm like old but shit you have to fucking hustle yeah um and i think i'm more on the path of like how do i work less how do i, <laughs> how do I learn new shit how do i like, experience stuff so, yeah um cool yeah. man cool man well it was a pleasure yeah man dimitri yeah ian nice to meet you nice man. to meet you man take care thanks for that dimitri